Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So moving on with more white wines. Um, so this wine I got from Underground Cellar. Wow, I haven't had one of those on the show in a while. And I got a whole bunch of them too. And I got more coming uh, later this year once when I have them shipped more. Uh, anyway, so this I've had for a minute. Um, it's the 2014 uh, Henri Darnot uh, Bourgogne Chardonnay. Um, it's like... It's called La Jumelie, and I thought the La Jumelie meant something, but it doesn't say here on the website. Their website really isn't that great. Um, it just like lists stuff. Uh, let's see, Cote de Bone is a subregion on it, and um, yeah, that's really about it. Um, it doesn't really give you anything else. So yes, so and I paid, I think I paid twenty three bucks. Let me look it up real quick. Pay twenty three dollars on Underground Cellar, uh, and I really don't know much about else about Henri Dunant because I can't find anything else about this this dude. Uh, anyway, so let's let's just get right into it. How you doing? The goal is to see if I can get all nine episodes done on the Osmo Pocket before the battery runs out. If not, the Vixia is totally fine because it's plugged into power. All righty. After this episode, I might see if I unplug and replug it in if it starts charging. Or look to see if it's charging, but it doesn't say it's charging over there. So real quick with this, when it's, it's doing you know the 4K 60p, First of all, the thing gets hot. That's another negative to, to the pocket is long-term, like you just keep recording, it gets hot. It, I don't think it's really designed to sit there and record for two hours straight. Again, another reason to use the phone or use the Vixia because the Vixia never overheats. Um, but uh, uh, it also might be why it's, it's using more power than it can draw from the power bank. So that might be what's going on with it too. All right, let's just get into the wine. Wow, man, oranges and peaches, like the last three wines. I highly doubt that the, the next wine's gonna be oranges and peaches because it's Sauvignon Blanc. But uh, yeah, I mean, like oranges and peaches, like a broken record, the last three wines. But this was a little more focused. So, and again, like candiness. Um, And it's almost, there's also like a little bit of um, like a bubblegum type of component. I know it's not really the type of thing you want to hear from a white burgundy, but um, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's like a, like a banana. Yeah, like a banana, like a banana taffy. I know, again, probably not what you want to hear about white burgundy, but it's in there. I'm kind of digging it. All right, let's check it out. So the oranges and peaches there, the banana is not as, not as prevalent. Um, there's a touch of green apple to it. A touch of caram caramel, like caramel green apple. Um, that's probably, it was probably more caramel than really um, banana, but it's almost like a, Almost like just like a literally just like, like a caramel candy. Um, yeah. Wow, it makes me feel like I should have this for Halloween. But I've, I'm like, I've already tasted it, so I can't make it Halloween wine. I'm pretty stoked that Halloween I'm gonna have some mead 
it has a really cool name. So I can't, I don't know if we can do it well, besides the mead. I can't figure out if I'm going to try to do all mead or like some other stuff, but I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, man. And it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's like an overt use of wood either. It probably is like used wood. Considering it's not Chablis, it's probably not all stainless steel or concrete. Um, it probably it probably gets some, um, and it's just Bourgogne, so it's it's not like Premier Cru or Village or Grand Cru, so it probably doesn't have you know really that much oak to it, or at least not new oak. On, on the next couple tastings, that caramel isn't as prominent, um, but it's definitely a like a, a really bright kind of higher acid, um, kind of higher acid Chardonnay. Uh, the the tartness is starting to come through, uh, so the the fruit's definitely tartar. Whereas on the on the nose, I, I talked about like you know candied again, but on the on the palate, it's not candied. It's just like it's just the actual fruit like slightly underripe peach, slightly underripe uh, orange, and like a green apple that's, you know, like a crisp, tart green apple that had a little bit of caramel on it, um, just to kind of soften a little bit. So um, it's really tasty. Like, I really feel like I'm in Burgundy, like just drinking like a good, just like, not entry level, because I wouldn't necessarily consider $23 entry level, but that's the, price that I paid here. Um, I bet you in Burgundy is probably closer to the equivalent of 15 bucks because it's just cheaper over there. So yeah, a nice entry level uh, white Burgundy. Super pleasant to drink. And I can see drinking this not necessarily summertime, but anytime, like in the fall. Yeah, it's really tasty. Nothing complex, nothing let's say overly serious, but an easy to drink, really good wine that you, you, you're not disappointed with. All right, so um, that's gonna do it. Wow, that was quick, that was quick. Um, that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, you wanna click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the links below to, uh, there's only not much to find out, but I'll put the website you can at least look at the other stuff that they make. Um, let's see. You can hit the donate button over there on PayPal. Send me a few ducats to help offset the cost of uh, Oregon. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.